I'll talk a little bit about Ayurveda. Um, Ayurveda, by definition, is a science of life. Uh, it's a holistic system that incorporates body, mind, soul, environment, and nature. Um, Ayurveda, the science of healing, includes um, many facets, including diet, nutrition, lifestyle, exercise, yoga, pranayama, which is a very important part of uh, Ayurveda, which is the um, way we breathe and uh, using breath for uh, energy and relaxation, exercises, meditation, herbs, rejuvenation, and much more. It is a complete science that incorporates the whole body, mind, soul, spirit, as I mentioned. Ayurveda comes originally from India and is more than 5,000 years old. Uh, it's believed to be the oldest healing science in existence. Many other systems, such as Tibetan, Taoism, etc., have used Ayurveda as their foundation or their starting point. And so you can see many similarities between the various healing uh, modalities, uh, especially in the Eastern world. Ayurveda has been, has been said to have its origins in the Atra Veda, uh, which is one of the four main books of Vedic spirituality. In the Atra Veda, it covers life as a whole, including political, social, health, economic, spiritual, ecological. In the 8th century BC, Arthaya collected all the healing aspects and developed the Cheraka Samhita. And we have copies of that in the back with um, the English translation. In the 5th century BC, Sushrita further developed the surgical aspects of Ayurveda. Um, Ayurveda is a natural system of healing and unification with the environment. Most importantly, it recognizes the ability of each person to heal themselves, and that we all have the inner tools. Sometimes, however, we need help to get back into balance for our individual body type. Ayurveda states that we, as well as plants, animals, etc., are made up of the five elements, ether, air, fire, water, and earth. There are three basic body types and combinations, according to Ayurveda. These three basic forms exist in nature as well as in our bodies. Um, the three basic, uh, and we will discuss uh, this a little bit further as well, but the body types are made up of the five elements. Every body type, when it's in balance for the particular person, is great. Disease happens when we are out of balance. And balance is not just physical balance, but also emotional, psychosocial, and environmental. According to Cheraka Samhita, uh, unhappiness is one of the major causes of disease as well. Ayurveda looks for the manifestations of disease. Um, it does not look for just the manifestations of the disease, it looks for the root cause. And this is one of the main differences between Ayurveda and Western medicine. Um, Western medicine looks at the actual disease and treats it. Ayurveda, by looking at the root cause, can prevent reoccurrences and is more useful for prevention. Um, or with Western medicine, since the root cause is not being treated, you will often have reoccurrences of the same thing with people that get bronchitis every year at the same time because the root cause has not been addressed. In addition, Western medicine is not time-tested. Uh, Western medicine is around primarily for the last 50 to 100 years. Ayurveda, 5,000 years. Um, although there's no double-blind placebo studies, it is tested with people, animals. So it is time-tested as opposed to the Western modalities. Um, in addition, uh, with Western medicine, they will often use a plant, but they will not use the entire plant. They will use or the entire flower or root. They will extract a very specific chemical for it, uh, for their medication. Um, this is very different from Ayurveda, which believes in the synergy within the plant itself, that it is not an isolation. So um, an example of this is their study here on curcumin, which is a main ingredient of turmeric. 
So rather than studying the whole turmeric, they're studying a very specific part. According to Ayurveda, this is not holistic and that you're losing some of the synergistic effects of the different components of the plant. Uh, another major difference between Ayurveda and Western medicine is the colon. Uh, even Western scientists are now finding that there are neurotransmitters in the colon similar to those in the brain. Uh, Western medicine uh, focuses, uh, or may say, you are what you eat. However, in Ayurveda we say, you are what you digest and absorb. The colon plays a major role in Ayurvedic uh, treatments. Um, in Ayurveda, digestion means not only digestion of foods, but digestion of emotions as well, which play a major role in health. We are all aware of the mind-body connections. For example, a lot of students right before an exam or a final exam will get diarrhea. <laughs> or if they have a breakup with someone, they have major colon problems. So we know that there is a connection, and we need to address that connection, and that's what Ayurveda does. Now we're going to go back a little bit to the basic body types. And these are reflected not only in people, but in nature and in the seasons. Um, there are three basic body types and combinations of them. Vata. Vata is composed of air and ether. Pitta. Pitta is composed of fire and water. And Kapha, which is earth and water. Most of us are combinations of the three with one predominant, possibly two at equal levels. And some people are tridoshic, all three. The seasons can also be broken down into these three forms. For example, the summer is considered the pitta season because of the heat or the agni. Um, even the time of the day corresponds to kapha, pitta, and vata. Pitta, again, the fire element, is at the peak between 11 to 3. And this is why the heaviest meal should be during that time. That is when our pitta, or our fire, is the highest, so our digestion will be the best from 11 to 3. The stages of life are also reflected. Uh, for example, childhood is considered a kapha time. And you'll notice that many more children have runny noses and coughs than older people because this is